Welcome, everybody. So this is me on a different day. I've been in the industry for well over 25 years at this point. I started as a study coordinator for about four to five years, then moved into being a CRA, project manager. I've been a director of clinical operations. I've been a program leader in a very large global organization, and have also worked quite a bit as an auditor. So what I'll try to present today is of a very practical nature. Again, best practices. There's always going to be nuances. There's going to be unique study challenges that you face. The challenge with the regulations with ICH and even with our FDA regulations is that while we have to adhere to them, it really isn't one size fits all in terms of, again, just the nuances of our subject populations, the particular study designs that we need to implement. So if you don't agree with something or if you're not sure what we mean or you have a different take, please, please, please do share. Again, you know, it's, it's not about memorizing what the regulations say or what ICHGCP dictates, but it's about what is the intent and then how do we implement that. We're going to talk about our learning objective in just a moment. And then we're going to move into talking a bit more about where you're at with your impact assessment. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the risk-based quality management approaches. So what is actually in the guidance document? And then we're going to delve into what does it mean? So we'll provide tips throughout the course in terms of there's this section and here's what it says. And then here's some ideas in terms of how we apply it and what to look out for. We'll look at how it's been implemented and effective lessons learned. And then we'll certainly wrap up the course again hopefully having a little bit of time at the end for additional questions. Our objectives for today, to define the three-way risk evaluation methodology, distinguish between the concepts of risk mitigation and risk acceptance, understand the concept of predefined tolerance limits. This one, to be honest, I have to give a lot of thought to. I worked with an organization, and it was something that our quality assurance group really started to focus on. And I was working with the risk-based monitoring team in terms of how do we do this. And we were actually in oncology, but we were in early phase development. So looking at phase one clinical trials, is it possible to do any kind of risk-based approach? And the answer is yes, because it's still the same concept. Focus proactively on where errors can arise, on where things can go wrong. It doesn't mean we're reducing monitoring. It doesn't mean we're not looking at all the data. It means we are being proactive. We really talked quite a bit about, well, what are tolerance limits? What does that mean? And we'll talk about that today in terms of the concept of how we predefine these. The fact that we still have to be flexible because things change, things happen we didn't expect, but basically the concept is a tolerance limit is the thing that cannot go wrong, that this will impact our results, this could impact safety. So by predefining it that this is our red zone, we cannot get to our red zone. So what are our warning signs before we approach this is really what it's all about. We'll talk a little bit about centralized monitoring, and we'll define best practices that we can implement based on practical experience. Again. As these chats are coming in, we're probably well over a century of experience now. So share. How have you done this before? What ideas would you like to implement or have you seen implemented? And then from the rest of you, just curious, has your organization completed your gap analysis? We're going to talk quite a bit about that and just the importance of doing that, doing a clinical trial assessment in terms of what are your needs, where are you at? And then have you done your impact assessment? And are you moving towards implementation of the risk-based quality management approach? So have you identified your needs? What would the impact be? What changes need to be implemented? What are the resources needed? What is the time needed? What would it take to get it done? And again, how is this related to your risk-based quality management approach? So any background information you want to send is fantastic. Let's give everybody a moment. 
when we talk about risk management topics, these are a lot of things that come up. So when we look at ICH, we consider what terms do we use? So if we look at ICH GCP E6, it has the great glossary. It has the definitions in there. So that's very helpful for sort of setting the tone. But it doesn't really define how we do our risk assessment. It holds us accountable for it, and it does share some key elements we need to consider, which we'll evaluate. But again, it's crossing those terms between industry standards, ICH, FDA, and then how do we actually apply things within our organization. So we'll talk about that in terms of what are the terms we need to know. We'll talk about some of those procedural documents what you need to have in place. Again, that is related to that impact assessment. Identifying what you need before you go ahead and start implementing it. And I think sometimes in this industry, we're very much problem solvers. And we jump into solutions mode, we jump into idea mode, we jump into correction mode without really thinking about the why behind it. So I am a huge believer in doing some kind of root cause analysis and that's related to risk as well. Again, if something could happen, why would it happen? And if something did happen, why did it happen? So again, not just looking at, okay, well, we'll track this. Well, why do we think it could happen to begin with? Would it be a lack of resources? Would it be a lack of tools, a lack of understanding? Because if we're going to track something, we need to implement a plan for what we're going to do if it starts to happen. And that's what those procedural documents are going to help lay out for us. 